yeah. It's almost exhausting, almost, at what everything that's been happening. So, how are things going for you personally? Things are going good? You got new, new help? All sorted? Uh, yeah? Uh, you know, nothing's ever all sorted. <laughs> there we go. But, There's my request for recording. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I do have, like... <laughs> Right. Yes, yeah, I think they're deeply offended. But I don't know. Should we go ahead and just like start the show? Yeah, like, I'll go ahead and 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 I'll like um read the beginning. You can our, add music later yeah. if you want. Or do you want to play music? Um I don't know what's easier for you. <laughs> I, it's just nice, I think, for the Twitter recording that they have okay. a little bit of music at the beginning. You know, it just sort of gives it a a feel. So let me get something ready here. Okay, go ahead and play whenever you want. All right. The countdown. Welcome to Beyond Humanity, brought to you by Hive1.net. With us today is Matt Reddy, host of the Mindful Activist webcast, published author of Revolutionary Mindfulness and a hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. He's an amateur ufologist, creator of Hive1.net, and a philosopher. I'm Margaret Howe, product manager of New Perspective LLC. In the Beyond Humanity podcast, we explore the possibilities and implications of artificial intelligence and alien life for human evolution, identity, and destiny. We want to invite anyone on Earth, human, alien, reptilian, AI, interdimensional beings, and Met fans. We are sponsored by the Sisterhood of the Forked Tongue Worm. You know, Matt, I think we want to invite anyone not on Earth also. Oh, did we only invite Earthlings? Yeah, I just realized. <laughs> well, we say human, alien, or reptilian, but we say anyone on Earth, anyone in the nearby vicinity. <laughs> yeah. I, you are invited. I um, concur. <laughs> I motion that we now open all Beyond Humanity live shows to any beings off Earth, even in different multiverses, if you agree. I agree. Uh, we do say interdimensional beings, so at least we got that part covered. But yeah, yeah. it just dawned on me that. If we got people surrounding us out there in space, come on in. Um, and I, I'd Matt, like to, oh, uh, go ahead. I would like to emphasize we welcome any dimension of being, including dimension of scale. If you are oh. incredibly small or incredibly giant, you are also welcome. Uh, we really are trying to include everybody and have nobody hiding and just causing trouble for all of us. So we really need to, anyways. Dimension of scale. I like that one. Um, hey, Matt, have you have any thoughts about super genius of the week? I mean, the, I was considering two. They're, they're kind of controversial. Who um, are you thinking oh, but about? Oh, I have a clip. Okay. Uh, oh, you have a clip? Yeah. Um, Re related to super genius of the week. Yeah. I have, I have one clip, I think, queued okay. up, ready to play. Let's and hear it. What if I play it without saying the name of the person? Because the name of the person is controversial, but I think we should just li listen to what this person says. Um, although you'll see it on the screen. But uh, all right, shall I do that? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, or do I have it queued up? But no, but, but okay, ready? Again, this is this is so much to digest here. Uh, that's all right. E e Elon Musk, you you spoke about him earlier in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, he I, I don't know him personally, but no, but but we, I'm, I'm just saying, we 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 brought his name up. Mm -hmm. Um, he and his company, SpaceX. Mm -hmm. They they uh, they just launched one of the most powerful rockets ever created on mm -hmm. Earth towards Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, he believes that that Mars needs to, to to be colonized. Do you think that we'll ever see a day when humans are colonizing on other planets? Uh, it, I, it, we might if we become peaceful. Here here's your entry ticket to the cosmos that you're what's called a level one civilization. 
Earth right now is a level zero. A level one civilization is peaceful, has developed the technologies so that they're not destroying their own biosphere, and they can go out into space with that peaceful intent. If that doesn't happen, you're not allowed to go very far. You're basically blocked by these other civilizations, as you should be, because you're set, you're, you're not civilized. We are not yet a real civilization, frankly, not even any real on a, on a universal cosmic definition. We're emerging civilization. So I think we will in the future. I think if we get this right and begin to function uh, as a peaceful civilization, we will be going not only to other planets in our solar system, we'll be going to other star systems. Uh, because that capability absolutely exists. But I think to do that, we have to change our consciousness, our social fabric. Uh, we're going to have to accept that seeing everything we don't understand, it, it doesn't mean that you have to kill it. You know, I mean, it, it, that's the whole problem. If you're a hammer, the whole world's a nail. Uh, we have to begin to look at things we don't understand in a way that doesn't immediately move us over into shoot first, ask questions later mindset, which is what happened with this whole issue in the 40s and 50s. So I think that if we get that right, sure. Now, as far as SpaceX, that's a rocket. Rockets were cool when Werner von Braun invented them in the 40s for Adolf Hitler in, in Germany. Um, we haven't needed rockets since October 1954. But All right, we'll just uh, stop that one right there. And uh, the other one I'm, I was considering was, uh, I, bl I believe her name is, uh, I don't want to get the name wrong. It's, uh, uh, well, I, uh, in the running also, Matt Laszlo, he's a mm -hmm. reporter that on Twitter cover, I mean, he is like, he, I mean, I think the guy might get a Pul Pulitzer Prize. Uh, for his coverage of this. He says he has completed an interview, an audio interview, a brief one of every senator. Uh, you got a hundred senators on the record wow. of Grush, and he's going to release all the Senate intelligence ones like first in the next like couple of weeks. And then he's going to release, you know, through uh, August, uh, all of them. And then another uh, person I was considering uh, is, what is her name? Her name is... Of a big... Linda, um, do you know who I'm talking? What I'm showing here is that Linda Howe. Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, she's uh, my gosh, she's this. I, I link this on my Twitter, and I'll put it in the show notes. This, she, she seems to like Greer. She's another one of those independent researchers that seems mm -hmm. to know a heck of a lot and have amazing contacts. At the beginning of this interview, she talks about a a whistleblower, uh, a woman that worked at a base that was able to see, you know, that was like, uh, that had like super insight into uh, everything going on. Um, and she has, and she's been interviewing this woman for like 30, 30 years. She has her now, she's mm -hmm. like in her 70s. And she, anyways, I just feel like Greer and, uh, and uh, Linda are two people that now I'm going to do some serious um, I mean, I've just sort of, sort of been like catching clips of some mm -hmm. of their interviews and I'm like, this stuff fits. They seem to know a heck of a lot that fits in. Um, and, you know, it's like, and I'm just trying to paint for myself a picture of, of what is going on behind the scenes. What are the real motives? And so anyways, both of Greer and Linda and uh, Laszlo are like, I think, playing a really important role um, as geniuses of the week. Good choices. Uh and Greer's absolutely right that we have to be way more peaceful to make progress, that we can't be fighting each other constantly, right? It's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, Linda Howe, or Linda Mol Molten Howe, that's her middle yeah. name, or maiden name, maybe, I don't know. Um, I saw an interview with her, an earlier interview with her and Richard um, Doty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he keeps coming up in my feeds this uh -huh. week um, as like talking about 
feeding disinformation, right? Yeah. Um, his story, his actual information that he gives has some problems. Like he contradicts himself between interviewers um, a little bit. I looked into him a little bit. Um, but the information that he talks about, the stuff that he did to give false information, that all seems pretty true. That all seems like uh, he really was giving disinformation, right? But his actual information about uh, dates and times and things that happened and what aliens ate and that kind of stuff, uh, those stories seem like they might be secondhand because uh, he doesn't always have them aligned. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. but his stories about his personal actions seem to be pretty spot on. Um, and Linda was one of the early interviews for him. Um, so it just seems like she is kind of blazing a path, right? Like she, she seems to be early in on stories that she courageously follows stories even when other people are poo-pooing it, right? Yeah. Um, just a very, very courageous woman. And in her field, like, uh, it is hard to be taken seriously. Um, and she has persevered through all of the stigma, right? Yeah. Well, it seems, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful that I was not sucked into this, you know, years ago, because I would not have enjoyed, you know, being the target of the type of things that the yeah. secret keepers have been using to make people feel like idiots, look like idiots, feel like they're insane, all the way up to harassment, you know, and murders. Uh, it seems it is an ugly, ugly history that we are going to uncover as we get to the truth of what's happened since 1933. And that's like, and it's not like the history before that's going to be prettier. It's just, this mm -hmm. is going to be way more personal for us. Everything that, you know, because we are going to have People, so a lot of us are gonna have relatives, you know, alive that have suffered through the deception. Um, so yeah, I'm just, a, I'm really, uh, and it was great that Burchett during the hearing thanked all the ufologist activists over the years. It's like saying, cause they are really, they are heroes for humanity. Um, yeah. Well, that acknowledgement is so critical coming from a government official. Um, you know, that I think that's kind of the, the biggest thing when they had the congressional hearings in the 19 uh, in 1966, um, it was skeptical. It was aggressive. It was defensive. And it was very clear the government didn't believe it. And it was very clear that their government researcher uh, didn't believe it. You know, the person they appointed to follow through. Uh, very, very clear that uh, nothing was believed, right? And this congressional hearing was respectful. It was, you know, patient and diligent and thorough, right? Um, but just a whole different world of acknowledgement and validation, right? And that, that's the real key that I'm hoping that people start pay more and more attention. You know, there were a lot of articles and news blurbs the following day going, oh, X-Files, ha, 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 right? Um, but then the stories have started filtering through. And those same news organizations that were like, X-Files, ha, 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 are now doing actual articles. Yeah. So. I, think, I, I think we're going to learn. It's going to be so interesting how this onion unravels if that's a valid metaphor, because, you know, we're going to be studying, I think, the the seven weeks, or I mean, even just the three, four weeks post disclosure, but every day that goes by that the news organizations and, and even just like talking heads, celebrities, famous scientists, every, every, you know, every major institution or human on earth that claims to have any legitimate authority and any ability to answer any question about anything with authority, they are on the clock. We are okay. waiting for you to uh, tell us honestly what you think and know. And like Neil deGrasse Tyson, 
he just made his play and looks like an I I didn't even listen to his whole thing, but it sounded like it was same old, same old, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, complete denial of the UFO alien reality. And so I think we have to say Neil deGrasse Tyson is is not credible. He's not he's as credible as Mike Turner of Ohio, you know, the the congressman who's been blocking the intelligence committee amendments um that are opening this up and who literally said after grush that it basically said he's like the one of the only congressmen to say that to question grush's credibility and it's just like these people are corrupt they are probably i mean and virtue i think knows he knows what is going on deep behind the scenes is basically probably just blackmail these people have you know there's things held against them so they it's not even the intellectual dishonesty they probably are just controlled by people that could ruin their lives mm -hmm. you know because this the group that's been hiding the secret has been willing to murder over the years willing to harass you know they've been willing to blackmail and how hard is it like i think Burchett even knows something because he's constantly talking about some of these congressmen have been like, you know, they go overseas and they meet somebody and they get videotaped and now they're blackmailed for the rest of their career. And I think he, he probably is talking about specific stuff he knows, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So yeah, what institutions and what, what media organizations can we trust? We just like, you, we just need to make a list of the date in which they first covered Grush, the date in which they first labeled Grush. And now you are suspect. If you have not named Grush yet and covered this, we have to assume you're completely broken and corrupt as an individual and as an organization. Or, you know, you should be coming forward with some like emotional, crazy, ontological shock, like say, hey, I am on team humanity and I want to help us all learn from this. Like some yeah. people are doing that. Some people are actually doing that. Team humanity. I like that. I like that a lot, right? Yeah. Not that we're like anti non-humanity, but humanity has been shafted for i mean i think the thing i was as i was on a walk this morning i'm just like i, I think we just need to, need to acknowledge the u.s democracy was surrendered in 1955 and that's why i ended grush's statement or not grush, uh, greer's statement when he said we have not needed rockets since 1954 i believe what he was referencing was the treaty that eisenhower signed in i thought i think in 1955 this mm -hmm. this legend of this treaty, which, um, you know what? And now I want to change my super genius because uh, the guy that was <laughs> apparently killed who I found, uh, you know, Ooh. his old, uh, he gave like, oh, what's his name? Um, but he seemed to know everything about Majestic 12. And, and he was, I found some old uh, video of him explaining everything, everything that's happened. And, and then I looked into his history oh. and he was killed. He was shot. Um, I should really uh, see. He was have, shot. Uh, yeah, if we had a big audience, they'd be yelling out who I'm talking about. I mean, it wasn't like, a mysterious accident. Uh, <laughs> That's the no. Um, let me see. Let me go. I have a. I, I'm going to go to my alien playlist because that died in his bed. Those are the two common ways, right? No, he was he was harassed until the day he died Good because God. he uh, put this stuff out. Let me just find. Who am I talking about? <laughs> so good with names and so prepared for our shows. Um, is that who no? Man, I can't find who I'm talking about. I can't find the. He's a he's a famous name in the ufology world. Um, let's see. Just give me a moment and I'll find it. You so believer shot. Another uh, interesting guy is uh, this Father Matthew Gray, who was the first interview after the Grush interview. One of the only Catholic priests to uh, mm. speak on this. Um. Yeah, we need somebody who's been to the Vatican. <laughs> He's been to the archives. What does the Vatican know? Mm -hmm. Right? That's the. Let's 
so much has happened. I have to scroll back so far through my feed for uh, when I uh, came across this guy. <laughs> yeah, your your Twitter is amazing. Okay. Like, I, okay, I found it. The secret structure of alien fast supervision, which was to become a reality within one year. This guy is the idea of Bill Cooper. That's born. Oh. It was Nelson's uncle Winthrop Aldrich who had been crucial in convincing Eisenhower to even run for president. The whole Rockefeller family and with them. Oh, sorry, I'm like playing it, but you guys can't hear it, can you? I can hear it. Uh, was it coming through on the? Uh, am I sharing? I'm not sharing my. I don't screen. know if it's coming through on the uh, Twitter space. Here, so. How about I just play a little and I, well, I'm gonna go to. Um, because I said he was killed. Why don't we just see what Wikipedia says about Bill Cooper? But he he seems to seriously have just... He was uh, killed by sheriff's deputies who tried to arrest him for tax evasion. Yeah. Yeah. They claim he shot first. Uh-huh. He was harassed for years after revealing everything that he knew. And it looks like they just came up with things to charge him with and yeah oh who gets killed who gets shot for tax <laughs> yeah I mean, what the heck yeah it's just like um no i think he was murdered but um i don't have like a specific here clip but he basically talks about the treaty and all the consequences you want me to just play some of it just so we get a taste sure, let's hear a little bit of it let's see He's definitely from that era. His voice has that accent, right? From the 60s. Um, yeah, where do I go? Where do I go? Let's see. Let's just jump into the middle here. So that Americans would not have to say, Your Omnipotent Highness. Oh, yeah. This is a good part. And then we spirited away to the base, and the excuse was given to the press that he was visiting the dentist for a toothache. Talking about Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. President Eisenhower met with the aliens in a formal treaty between the alien nation and the United States of America was signed. We then received our first alien ambassador from outer space, his name and title, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's absolutely true. His name and title was His Omnipotent Highness Krill, pronounced Krill, spelled K-R-L-L-L -L -L or C-R-L-L-L. -L -L. In the American tradition of disdain for royal titles, he was secretly called Original Hostage Krill or O-H Krill so that Americans would not have to say, your omnipotent highness. <laughs> you should know that the alien flag is known as the trilateral insignia. It looks like a TP with two circles on either side of the V and one pole running straight down the middle. It is displayed on their craft and worn on their chest on their uniforms. Both of these landings in the second meeting were filmed and the film exists today. Where it exists, I do not know, but I do know that it exists. The treaty stated, the aliens would not interfere in our affairs and we would not interfere in theirs. We were particularly interested that they do not interfere with anything that would affect our future, which has been violated. We would keep their presence on Earth a secret. They would furnish us with advanced technology and would help us in our technological development. They would not make any treaty with any other Earth nation. They could abduct humans on a limited and periodic basis for the purpose of medical examination and monitoring of our development with the stipulation that the humans would not be harmed, would be returned to their point of abduction that the humans would have no memory of the event and that the alien nation would furnish MJ-12 with a list of all human contacts and abductees on a regularly scheduled basis. And so let's just stop it right there. MJ-12. Yep. This guy, Bill 12. Cooper, he claims, I mean, he's going into, this is like sci-fi details of this and he named MJ-12. There is no way Lou Elizondo's lawyer went on TV and named Majestic 12 without knowing it will force everyone to consider Bill Cooper and his entire story. I mean, Lou Elizondo almost through his lawyer was basically saying, listen to Bill Cooper in by dropping that name, Majestic mm -hmm. 12. And so I'm listening to him. And, and I mean, this guy, it seems to me, this is like Stephen Greer, you know, and Linda Howard 1.0. And he was killed. He was shot for tax evasion. Like, it's like, I, you know, Anyways, so yes, he definitely gets a, a super genius of uh, the week, you know, honorable mention as well. <laughs> yeah, it just seems unbelievable. I mean, like, 
why why would why would deputies feel like they had to you know press press him right like what uh, tax evasion is it is the easy thing to arrest for just wait till he goes to the grocery store like <laughs> yeah did know? that look like a guy that was dangerous did that look no. like a guy that was like you know needed to be shot by you know deputies it uh, makes no sense uf ufo researcher whistleblower mm -hmm. so yeah i would have been shot if i had learned this 10 years ago i think i would have been shot because i would not have been quiet i would have been i would have gotten myself in trouble i'd be like <laughs> camped out of area 51 with a protest sign no shushing you up well that that makes sense with your uh your uh interest in occupy isn't that right yeah. yeah. Oh, if I had known during Occupy, but I, then I would have been, it would have been funny if I had been with all the Occupy people. I mean, I don't know. That was all about the banking thing. And I think mm -hmm. it's so easy to connect this to the banking thing. I'm just not sure the Occupy people would have taken the alien topic seriously, but uh, they might now. The next time the world starts protesting, I have a feeling we're going to be very open minded about alien cover up being like at the root of almost every corrupt institution on earth it does feel like there is basically like a, a corporate overlord conspiracy <laughs> like uh between the you know um basically the the war machine and, and the banking um it just seems like those industries have manufactured huge budgets to be able to siphon off of, right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it seems to me that I, I think we can just sort of think of Earth as a, a mining planet operation. I mean, I think, I think that's the, it really, it, it really makes sense that there's a, a species that, I mean, it, maybe they're just species on Earth sharing Earth. I mean, I, I actually think that's true, but they're, they're probably groups living out in space. They might have used to live on Earth and they're living on space stations or the moon mm -hmm. or Mars, and they see Earth merely as a resource for stuff like mining operations, labor, whatever they get from us. And they just don't care that the surface humans are deceived by the true nature of the universe. They just don't care. They, they like Greer says, we're considered a emergent civilization, but we haven't emerged yet. We're we're just like fighting and killing each other and ignorant and dumb and easy to fool. That's what humans are. We're on a prison planet that's in a, not allowed to leave the planet because we're too violent, not allowed to know about good higher technology because they're saying we haven't figured out how to have peace on earth, but we haven't figured out how to have peace on earth partly because the aliens have been helping the, uh, the nastiest parts of human humanity to keep control all this time. And that's, you know, I think like, I'm like at this point now, I'm just thinking about alien culpability, alien ethics, you know, I, when they emerge, they are gonna no doubt claim that they did nothing wrong, that mm -hmm. it was all us, but they did. They, if they, the minute they signed a treaty with Eisenhower, you know, if they did, they were a part of the, you know, dismantling of democracy on earth and undermining it. And they have, you know, you are, if you're hiding, if you're, if you're lying, I mean, at the, at a certain point, deception and lying becomes a literally a form of violence and assault and violation of rights. There we go. I was just getting Twitter space on my phone so that I didn't have to listen to it echo. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure what was uh, like, jumping in. Well, I tried having it on my laptop, but for some reason my laptop keeps going off. But anyway, um, I want to be able to see if someone joins, right? That's uh, Yeah, yeah. I've been, I, I have my eyes on the uh, thing too, in case someone okay. jumps in. Because um, I just really appreciated when people, you know, chimed in, right? Um, yeah, it was, it was wild to have people jump in. Did I tell you I got to go talk to some uh, kids about aliens in the space? Where where at? Uh, How did that go down? Local YMCA summer camp. Uh, oh, cool. They were having space camp, and 
we through a connection they asked if i wanted to come as i was and they they said uh so it was kids between five and 12 it was like chaos 30 kids oh, five wow. and 12 at this summer yeah. camp and uh <laughs> they introduced me as the alien guy and they just like yeah, the alien guy is here and they called the kids in and i had all these uh display i had a bunch of show and tell you know because i've been collecting stuff mm -hmm. and uh so i like had out on the two tables um like a couple things to start with and then I, and they just started at just i was like who has a question and they just started raising hands but it was all about really like space and physics and what happens if a black hole hits another black hole or what happens oh, if a wow. galaxy hits another galaxy or if i mean it was like there was for some reason these kids are obsessed sci-fi happens if Fears, huh? planets collide and what happens in a black hole I, it's a it's a strange and then eventually though there were some questions about aliens i'm not even sure the kids knew know mm -hmm. what's happening in the alien world but there's something their brains are awakened to it and finally, one kid asked, what do aliens look like? Okay, they were, they kept on asking me if aliens live in our galaxy or in other galaxies. Mm. I was like, probably both. And I, and I even told them they might even be able to be invisible. So they might even be in this room at the same time as us. <laughs> I was just like, I was just, you know, I just throwing it all out there. It was chaos. Oh, wow. Like, I'm going to scare you. You kids are just like, they're just like eating it up. And a couple of them were really into it. Like one was like, you know, um said is a inside of a black hole could be another universe and i was like yeah that's one of the big theories you're right and he was like nice to the, everyone of how he saw that but that so then finally one kid asked what do aliens look like and i was like oh, i was hoping you would ask <laughs> and then <laughs> i took out my uh i brought a suitcase and i was like so what alien what do aliens look like does anyone know and someone said actually the first one was like uh, mentioned the alien from the movie aliens the, the mm -hmm. crazy scary you know mm -hmm. insectoid reptilian alien and I was like yeah there it is one of the theories I don't have a anything to display that one uh and I was like any other aliens you know you know and then someone was like the the gray ones with the head and I was like yep and I took out I had a, a gray alien mask mm -hmm. I had several of them I took it out and they were like oh and I and they were like put it on and so I put it on <laughs> And then, you know, I, I put it on the thing and I had a, a couple of gray alien things. And then I was like, any other aliens you kids have heard about? And they, they didn't name any, but I was like, mm -hmm. what about reptilian? And they were like, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Reptilian aliens. And I was like, OK, guys, before I show you what I got for reptilian aliens, what color are reptilian aliens? And they because there's a lot of debate, it seems, mm -hmm. about the color. And so they uh, the they said brown. And uh, mm -hmm. I was like, maybe brown? What about green? And they were like, oh, maybe green. And it's like, are they brown or green? But I had a, a mask for both of them. So I took mm -hmm. those out. And they're kind of dinosaur masks. They're not really the greatest. And then, uh, yeah, and they, they were just like, and then they started putting on the masks and running around the room. And I had an R2-D2 to sort of represent <laughs> the AI alien possibility. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I had, for the final piece, I had the... Um, which I, I won't show. I mean, I suppose I could show these sometimes, but I had, I was like, do you guys know the best reptilian alien ever in any show? Has he ever, you know, I was like, has anyone, I have a figure for that. And uh, I told him, actually, the best one is a Slee Stack from Land of the Lost, which I don't have. Slee yeah. Stack is, I think, a great, and plus the Slee Stack lived underground via a strange waterfall in another world, which it seems basically one of the reptilian hypotheses. So it's really a interesting show. And one of the kids was like, I want to see that. I got to see that. But uh, I was like, from movies, the best humanoid reptilian alien that I've ever seen is from Empire Strikes Back. Hmm. And yeah. it's uh, one, yeah. one of the bounty hunters, boss. Uh, and I have like a, like a, you know, like a, a one foot size figurine of boss. And he is a brown reptilian. But uh, yeah, so I showed them that. And uh, anyways, it was... It just sort of like, it's like, why are kids screaming out questions at me? And why aren't mm -hmm. adults? Why aren't adults doing? It's like, but I think it's going to happen. It's like the kids are, as soon as all the kids realize, what the heck are you? Aliens are real. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine me, a teacher coming in September, first day of school, science class, history class, and the kids are like, uh, what, uh, <laughs> what? Can you explain again how human history happened? Like, 
Okay, let's talk about World War II, teacher. So tell us okay. about 1933 and Mussolini having a UFO craft uh, and giving it to the Vatican, and then in 1945, giving it to the United States in secret. Can you please fill us in in that part of human history? I came across a, um, a legend uh, this week about green children emerging from a wolf pit in like the 12th century England, right? Yeah. And that. and they said they were from like the the land of twilight, right? Mm -hmm. That it was always darker there, right? And I I just was thinking about the reptilian, you know, the whole mythos of it, right? If they are in the earth, where does their light come from, right? Just mm -hmm. trying to unpack that and the color it, you were talking about. What color are reptilians, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what did they say in that myth about light? You, what did you mean that they said about twilight? That they can't, the place that they came from um, had no sunshine. It was always just twilight. But it did have some light. Yeah, there, there was some kind of light, but it was like the light of what, what we would think of as dusk or dawn or twilight. And what color were they? Green. They were green. And it was like two yeah. green, it was two children, right? Yeah, a boy and a girl, and supposedly the boy died um, not long after, but the girl survived to old age. I wonder if the girl had children. And that she became less green. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. But did she have children? Are there descendants? This is in Scotland? Um, let's or was see. it England? Suff Suff Suffolk? How do you say that? Suffolk? England? Suffolk, Suffolk England. Yeah. Huh. In the yeah. 12th century. So, like, I mean, very, very strange tale. It's so detailed that I can't imagine that that would just be an invention, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, let's see. I'm looking at the Wikipedia of it. I don't see anything about her having children. Um, but there was, like, in one of the references, uh, she became promiscuous basically uh, and you know if she if she was strange that's very often that very often happens when someone is weird looking or unusual right i mean i but, think it very often happens with almost all human beings yeah but i mean yeah, just like, like compared the, to ancient times currently that seems all humans have a easy tendency to compare to before 100 years ago where you'd have one partner perhaps in your lifetime humans now are so but, but yeah the exploitation and abuse of people that are different yeah um that's what i meant okay. um yeah but yeah i don't see anything about it talking about her having children but i would assume so based on that right yeah well it's such an inch that is like that is such an interesting story to dig into Mm -hmm. For one, I mean, if we're just assuming there are aliens living in the crust, right? Let's say there really are living there, and that's where these two children somehow came from. What society would allow two of their children to just wander up and live in England with humans? Like, who would, why, what circumstances would ever allow uh, a secretive, group with greater technology than the people on the surface to allow two of their children to just go up there and be you know and have whatever consequences they get from human society mm -hmm. Ugh, my brain is like Ugh. I, I guess I'm well they they it. knew the children knew they were lost and at the start they didn't speak english but the girl learned english eventually and gave explanations right they were lost yeah and I suppose they could have, if you wander far enough away from your slee stack underworld, I guess you could find yourself in human society and maybe your parents are like, it's unsafe to go up there. Or maybe it's illegal. Maybe it's just literally if your kids wander up there, it's illegal for you to go up after them. And so you just don't. You're just like, I suppose. But it's got to be some something weird because otherwise you just go and get them. You know, why didn't you just go up there and sneak into their house at night and say you're coming back home? 
You're our children. <laughs> Why would you leave them with humans? And would it be really that hard to find the only green children in England? Mm -hmm. She lived to old age. I mean, it's some, I mean, everyone knows about her. She was right there. Yeah, the wiki article says she married, that she was a servant that eventually was married off. I mean, this could, it seems like this would be such an interesting genetic study, like just doing a genetic survey study of Suffolk, England, for people that know they go back many generations there, you might find evidence of alien DNA in the, uh, you know, in the population. Well, entirely possible. She married a royal uh, named Richard Barr. She married a royal. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was a justice, clergyman, and a scholar. Well, it's making more sense now. If you, I mean, because it seems like it, it, it seems to be a ton of evidence that the the aliens in the crust have been manipulating humans through lineages, you know, mm -hmm. through certain families. And they probably like that. I mean, one that's come up is the Rockefellers. Uh, I think it was, I think it was through Bill Cooper's thing. Yeah. I think he goes deep into how the Rockefellers were involved after Eisenhower and, um, yeah, the Rockefellers seem deep, deep into this. But anyways, but other, you know, in the olden days, the Rockefeller is like a modern royalty. You know, mm -hmm. it's like in a capitalist society, these Trump family, Rock, these are, but in the olden times, you actually just had royalty. You just had, and so that a, uh, say, a, a an alien reptilian female came up to the surface and managed to marry a royal human to become part of the royal bloodline, I mean, I I bet you who this I bet you if we look at that guy's descendants, I bet they had descendants that worked their way into really powerful positions in the royal uh, family. I, I mean, I bet that that would be a way of injecting specific DNA that you wanted into the royal line by sending one of your children up there to, you know, to get married to one. I mean, that might have been her mission. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, you never know. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some, you know, well, the fact that most of the US presidents are related to each other, uh, you know, and then like you have like long standing rich families like the Hearst family, uh, you know, the Rockefellers, people like that, that you just go, how, how are they still in power, right? Like how this just legacy of power, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the, the depressing, one of the really like sort of sad, depressing things for me, again, from my walk this morning was thinking about the U.S. presidents who get elected to office and like Carter and the minute they start to smell this conspiracy, this corporate military conspiracy, then they're probably told, I mean, I would think they're probably shown the Eisenhower Treaty. And there, and I, and also it goes back to Eisenhower. You know, why mm -hmm. did Eisenhower sign that? I, I don't think, I think he was trying. I, I, my brain realized I think that was World War Three. He signed that treaty to prevent World War Three. World War Two ended. U.S. did okay, but then it was the aliens were like, "This is World War Three now. Do you want to sign this treaty, or do you want us to mess you up?" They clearly at that time. They, whoever these aliens were, they had way more power than all human military and technology. And so Eisenhower, mm -hmm. I believe he signed it because he had to. It was just like why Truman dropped the nuclear bomb. It was to try to save lives. I think Eisenhower was trying to save lives and not have to have humanity plunge into another war. And maybe he even, maybe that was the moment that he launched this long term plan for whatever good humans left in the US government and intelligence and military. And it basically was like, we have to get our technology up to a point where we can say no to the aliens. And I think maybe that's where we are. We have finally progressed to a point, our technology is strong enough that we can at least defend ourselves against some of the alien enemies. I don't think they would have allowed but anyways, it, I, I digress. But just the thought that every president that gets into office is told, look, you are just a steward. You're just a bureaucrat. You, you're, not, uh, you're not John Wayne. 
You can't be like, I'm going to say no to aliens. It's like the aliens would just say to them, not only can we kill you, we can kill anyone in your family. We have done it before. You will not disobey what this entrenched, in ex whatever the exec the executive branch has like entrenched people that have known this and have been in control of the military complex. They don't leave when people get elected or voted out of office. There's like entrenched knowledge in there that has known this whole time and that any president that stepped out of line, they could just say, they could just threaten them. They were, and they were just like, and that would have worked. And that would have just, I mean, these guys, what a bummer to be like, oh, I'm leader of the free world. And they're like, oh yeah, actually the free world is under control of aliens. And, you know, <laughs> sorry. That's so much. Yep. You're a patsy. You're just a patsy. Well, I'd really like to know, like, I'd like to see where the Majestic 12 are now, right? Hmm. Um, the original title for that was the Majority Agency for joint intelligence right and how similar is that to the central intelligence agency that was short yep. formed shortly after that right yep. um yeah it's really um really really interesting um that the original majority 12 comes from an acronym about intelligence gathering um <clears throat> And the name of that treaty, uh, Grieta. Where does Grieta come from? Grieta, Grieta. I don't. Know. I don't. I don't know. Grieta. I haven't been able to find. I see lots of references to the name of the treaty, but I don't find <clears throat> what it actually stood for. Right. Oh, gosh. Um. So I love to read that treaty. Yeah. Exactly. Definitely would like to see more about that. Right. Um, it has to name the parties. Who are the parties of the treaty? U.S. government and who? Mm -hmm. It's like, and that's the Bill Cooper thing where he named the alien ambassador. He said there was the first alien, and he says during that thing that we did an exchange of sixteen people for sixteen aliens, like, and the job of these sixteen people. And he's like, he says, I don't know what happened to those sixteen people. As far as he knows, they'd never come back, you know. And it's like, uh, but if there is a alien ambassador as part of the treaty, maybe there is one right now. And mm -hmm. I have a guess uh, of, it, it might be one that you might look like a human. And I have my uh, guess of uh, possible people that could be this uh, alien ambassador. Are you going to put that in your Patreon? <laughs> your, your list of possibles? That right. is a great idea. I can I, I can do it in the form of a poll. There's like I think one of these five people could be the current alien ambassador. What do you think? And have it, but that's a great idea. We'll put that in Patreon. Yeah. We don't have anyone in our Patreon, but are in the Patreon. But you know, <laughs> but it's so fun to put that in there because there's so many. It seems disinformation trolls on Twitter. Yeah, you know, I just love the idea of them having to pay to find out like you know who we think their boss is <laughs> well you want to have content in your patreon for when you get your first subscriber so yeah yes so need to build that content and that definitely would be a great one uh, yeah but I, I can't see holding it back real long but i think like once the senate does their hearing they're gonna have to it, it's i don't know it, it's it's gonna be so hard not to uh just start to unravel everything. I mean, at some point, the Justice Department has to do a press conference and tell us which crim what criminal investigations are underway right now. Who's being, at some point you have to arrest people if you know they committed, you know, assassinations or crimes. I mean, yeah. So uh, I think stuff's gonna unravel. Ah, ah, what the truth are hiding? Will it stay with the private sector? Or will it rebound? Will it hide it in the morning? Take a turn into the afternoon. Feel the truth that is slipping away. Don't believe it's coming back soon. The secret's not in Congress. Or elected ones we trust In private hands
Don't be afraid.